what you want, cause a pirate is free. You are a pirate. You're our favorite indeed. Being a pirate is a wretched thing. Do what you want, cause a pirate is free. You are a pirate. My sister served as a missionary in Peru for a few months. When she got back, she had a few interesting stories. One of which was when she was visiting an impoverished family. There were these ki kids and they were playing with these most adorable kittens. My sister and my friend were there and they saw this and the friend looked around and she got to thinking and she went to the parents and then she said, where's the mother cat? Where, where, where's the mother of these kittens? And they looked at her and they said, oh, we had her for supper last night. Now this might be shocking to most Americans because we don't usually go around eating domesticated animals, but in other cultures it's okay. Our sense that this is incorrect or appalling is a culturally derived belief. Now there's other culturally derived beliefs in morality and one such which I'm going to be talking about today is intellectual property or copyright or patent law. Now Christians who defend copyright law or patents usually do so under the label of thou shall not steal. They link it inherently to morality and compare downloading movies to stealing a purse. Just like those anti-copyright violation ads you see probably on TV or before a movie. Now there's no real actual biblical basis for this. If you look to the Ten Commandments, thou shall not steal, the word there used is ganab. And when it's used in the Bible, it's a little tricky to use this word because figuratively it means stealing away. Like people stole away into a city, that means they used stealth to get into a city. Or people stole away someone's heart, meaning they used deceiving methods in order to get people to follow them. But when this word is used in conjunction with theft, it's never used for intellectual means. Um, they couple this word with stealing idols, stealing sheep, stealing money, ox, and of course items in general. One thing you fail to see in this list is intellectual property. Uh, things that would be covered by patent laws. Stuff like bronze making, wheel making, both technologies that the Israelites eventually had. The bronze working was actually uh, implement, it impeded the Israelites when they were first facing their enemies. So eventually adopting this, they must have had to violate copyright law at one point in time, if copyright law was, is actually in fact part of this inherent morality that we are all bound by. Now we also need to note that the Bible had ample opportunity to explain copyright and copyright law. So there was a lot of activities back in those days that would be covered by modern copyright notions, such as artisans, people making wood objects. There were blacksmiths, there were copper workers, silversmiths, all types. Paul himself was, was a tent maker. So the, there were a lot of skills that could, would be covered by today's patent or copyright laws. But the fact that the Bible does not ever introduce intellectual property as being something viable is proof that it is not inherently immoral. Now this phrase, intellectual property, what exactly is that? It's, it's hard to get a straight answer out of those advocates of copyright and intellectual property laws. We take an example of Stephen Colbert on his show. He made up the word truthiness. Now, me using that, would advocates of copyright want me to pay a royalty to him? Is that his word now that he coined it? That he alone has the rights over? How about if I decide to go into the haircutting business and I decide that I'm gonna cut hair by pulling out people's hair like this? Is that method copyright now because I did it first and I, or I said, I want to patent this particular method first. When advocates of intellectual property start talking about their limitations, you'll find very quickly that it's very arbitrary of what they would classify as under intellectual property and what isn't. Now God's laws aren't arbitrary. 
They're not fickle. They're not vague. And when people are very hesitant to be able to strictly define what they mean by intellectual property, that should be sending up red flags that this is a made up and bogus concept, this intellectual property. What is intellectual property? When I take someone else's intellectual property, are they left with less? No, it's an exact duplication. It's a simulation and it's a replication. They are not left any poorer when I take their intellectual property. So property in general, what images uh, come to mind? Well, maybe this uh, mouse is my property, maybe this uh, couch, maybe my house, my land. When you take my property from me, when you engage in theft, I am deprived of my property. I have no longer have access to that property. If you steal my couch, my couch is gone, I can't sit on it. Now, when you steal my intellectual property, am I left any poorer? Well, people have argued, oh yeah, the music artists, they might not actually make as much money as they would have otherwise. But when McDonald's is in town and Burger King comes in town and plants right next to them, McDonald's profits go down. So decreasing profits in itself is not immoral. On a final note, to those who like to obscure the issue by confusing copyright violations with fraud, like in the instance of plagiarism, copyrights have nothing to do with fraud. There could be laws against fraud without laws against copyright. There could, that would include plagiarism, writing something and saying, I originated this idea. That's not a copyright violation. That would be the fraud violation. And you could have laws against fraud without copyright laws. To those who advocate intellectual property on a moral ground, my challenge to you is this. Find me in the Bible where it supports the concept that intangible ideas, ideas that can be replicated without destruction of the original idea or anything similar to that, where that is labeled as immoral by the Bible. Those who advocate copyright and intellectual property laws on economics ground, I would direct you to read the book, The Case Against Intellectual Property, which I will be linking to as well. Thank you.